بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله continue on in our study of أصول الستة by Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى using the explanation of Sheikh Zaid al-Madkhali رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة and also benefits from Imam Fozan and Imam uh, Muhammad Aman al Jami, Rahim, uh, Rahmatul Ali, Rahmatul Wasiya. First, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the last, the first uh, sitting, or the first asl from the, those Sitta Asul, we mentioned uh, that the first Asul is. Or the first asl is uh, ikhlas lillah, that the deen is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the fawa'id or benefits, Shaykh Abdul Razak al Bedr, hafidhullah ta'ala, he mentioned that all of the other usul are built upon this asl. So that ikhlas lillah. It is the first asul that Muhammad ibn al uh deduced from the Quran and from the importance of that asul. That asul is the asul of the deen and it's the asul of having one's deeds accepted and all the other asul, all the other foundations are built upon that. Built upon what? Built upon ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ikhlas, it is what distinguishes one act of ibadah from another act of ibadah. And it is, for example, dhuhr uh, from asr. How do we know dhuhr from asr? They're both prayers that we pray uh, silently. Okay? But it's the niyyah. Of course, it's the time as well, but the niyyah is what really distinguishes those two prayers. It's the intention. It's the, it's the intention of the person worshiping. So that is so that's how the niya, the intention, and having sincerity, how that distinguishes one act of ibadah from another. Likewise, your intention, it distinguishes one uh, and, and uh, distinguishes ibadah from adat, from habits. So for example, uh, what makes the salat different from a type of exercise or a type of yoga. Okay? When you're bowing, you're prostrating, and you're you're doing those uh, those rituals that Islam has that has been legislated for us from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those acts those actions that have a type of that involve movement, they involve prostration they involve straightening the back, so there's actually a stretching of the muscles. There's all kind of actions that are taking place when one prays. But what distinguishes it from, for example, some sort, a sort of yoga or some sort of activity, some sort of physical activity, is it's the, the intention, the niya. Is that your intention is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So ikhlas, ahabatifillah, which is in the heart, in the niya, the sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this worshipping Him and Him alone and having a sincere, pure intention, the intention, all of these are matters of the heart. And they are the qalb of the ibadah or the action. They are the heart of action in deeds, is the intention. The Prophet said, in ma'amala bin niyat, wa inna kulli mirin manawa. Everyone should get that for in the ma'amal of inyad. Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. When the malikul limri and manawa, and everyone should get that for what he intended. So, letting us know that the sincerity to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that that everything is built upon it, and that relates to your intention. Your intention, if it's sincerely for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, or is it for some worldly gain? Or is it to do uh, an exercise? Or is it to do this or to do that? All of those things are determined by 
uh, the intention and one's sincerity. Getting into the, the treaties, the Imam mentioned the second principle and he mentioned the second principle and that is Tafarraq or it is the the command to be one Ummah and avoid divisions avoid Hizbiyah and, and divisions so he said Asla Thani the second foundation Amr Allahu bi ijtima'a fi al-deen wa nahi an tafarraq fihi fabayyan Allahu hadha bayanan shafi'an tafhamuhu al-awam so Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala he said the second principle Allah has commanded with unity ijtima' in the religion and he has prohibited splitting which is tafarraq uh, so Allah has clarified this with a sufficient explanation that can be understood by the common folk. So this is very clear from the deen. The command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be one ummah all throughout the Quran and all throughout the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But uh, the imam here is mentioning specifically in the Quran. This is clear. Shaykh Muhammad Amman said, Rahmatullahi Rahmatullahi he said about this, he said, فَكَرْ أَمَرُ اللَّهُ أَمْرًا صَرِيحًا وَنَاهَا نَهِيًا صَرِيحًا بِقَوْلِهِ وَاعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded this very clearly and He has prohibited this, meaning tafarraq and division, very clearly and very directly. In the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَسِمُ بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on, all of you stand fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Then the Imam, he said, وَهَذِي عِبَارَ صَرِيحًا يَفْهَمُهُمْ مَعْنَاهَا كُلُّ مَنْ يَفْهَمَ اللَّهُ تَعْرَضِيَا فَلَيْسُ هُنَاكَ مُفْرِدْ غَرِيب يَسْأَلْ عَنْهُ الْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَ اعتسموا بدين الله بكتاب الله وبهدي رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبما جاء به رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذا الاختلاف اختلاف تنوعي ومعنى واحد واعتسموا بما جاء به محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم فسر هذا الاعتسام بقوله ولا تفرقوا فجملة الثانية تفسير الأول الأولى أي لا تفرق في الدين ولا تكون فرق وأحزاب والجماعة. This is very beautiful and very wise speech from Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami, رحمه الله تعالى. So what he said regarding this asal and regarding the ayat where Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, and hold on, you all stand fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. He said that that ibara that that. Uh, statement is very clear that anyone who knows the Arabic language can understand. He said there is not any strange terminology in that sentence that someone needs to ask about. He said except for this, the, the short statement hold on to the rope of Allah. He said so the meaning of the hablillah of the rope of Allah is hold on to the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah. And his and the book of Allah, and the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with, and he said, and that is those each of those uh, tafsir, each of those explanations have differences, and he said this is ikhtilaf to know with you, meaning that this is the ikhtilaf, because ikhtilaf, as the scholars mention in usul al they mention. Uh, that there's اختلاف تنوع و اختلاف تضاد اختلاف تنوع means gradations or slight degrees of اختلاف meaning they don't contradict one another and this is what he's talking about here اختلاف تضاد means that it's a contradiction for example 
the Ahlul Sunnah says, Ar-Rahman al ars istawa because Allah says that. You know, the Most Merciful rose above His throne. The, uh, the Ash'arida, for example, they say, they say, no, it means istola or it means this. So they explain it away. Their difference in explanation from our difference in explanation are ikhtilaf to ba'd. They're not ikhtilaf to no one. They totally contradict one another because theirs involves a negating of the meaning and a changing of the meaning. Whereas ours is apparent going with the apparent, the vahid or meaning of the ayah. So that's ikhtilaf to ba'd. But here, Shaykh Muhammad Amman al-Jami is mentioning ikhtilaf to no one from the tafsir of the Mufassirin and the Salaf, what they said about Hablillah, the meaning of Hablillah. So meaning some of them said that it means uh, Islam, you know, it means the deen of Allah. Some of, it meant, some of them said that the Hablillah, the rope of Allah, means the Qur'an. And some of them said it means the guidance of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So those are three different uh, explanations, but they don't contradict one another. So that's why they're considered, this is called ikhtilaf tanawa. This is gradations of differences. And you'll find that all throughout uh, many aspects of the deen and, and tafsir and, and so on and so forth and some of the other sciences in which they had differences, but the differences did not necessarily contradict one another, especially when it comes to tafsir. And sometimes in fiqh, sometimes you have ikhtilaf tabad. Sometimes you have things which are totally opposite in understandings or meaning. So he said these are he said they're they're gradations and differences, but the meaning is one. It's really one meaning. Follow Islam, follow the book of Allah, follow the Son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi It's all one meaning. And adhere to what the Prophet Sallallahu came with. And then he said, then that adherence, that ittisam. That's mentioned in the ayah, in the first part of the ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتَسِّمُوا You know, He's commanding us. And remember, Al-Amr يُفِيدَ al الْوُجُوبِ That whenever we have a command in the Sharia, that means that the asl of that command is that it's an obligation. Unless there's other uh, text to show that it's not an obligation, it's mustahab, you know, it's recommended, or, or some other uh, hukum. So the asal of a command is that it is a obligation. And the asal or the origin of a prohibition in the shari in the shari in the sharia in the Quran or in the Sunnah shows that that's a uh, a prohibition that it's haram to do. So here in this ayat, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings us both. Uh, Al-Amr wa Nahi. In this ayat, there is both a command and there is a prohibition. Allah commands us to be one. He commands us to hold on to the rope of Allah. And He prohibits us from and do not divide. He prohibits us from division. Jameel. Imam uh, Muhammad Amman, he said that this, in the first part of that verse, it actually is explained by the second part of the verse. Because he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what holding on, what it means. And what it means is the next part of the ayat, wala tafaruku, and do not divide. He said, so the, the second uh, ibarah or sentence or statement or second part of the statement explains the first part, which means... Do not divide in the religion. And do not be into groups, his, you know, uh, groups or sects, and par parties or partis having partisanship, and jama'at, and also, uh, you know, groups. So, for example, a firqa might be uh, the Khawarij, or Shia, or Mu'tazila or Naqshbandi. Those are sects in Islam. They have a sect. That means they are united upon a particular creed. Al-Hizb and Ahzab, just in general, they, these terms are very similar. 
Uh, his could even be a political party like Hezbollah Bath or Hezbollah something, or they can also be a his like a group like Jamaat al Tablik or Jamaat al Ikhwan al Muslimin or Jamaat al Takfir al Hijra. These are actually groups, Ahzab or ISIS. They're a group or Boko Haram. They've made a group. They make bay'ah to their to their emir or uh, Daesh or, or um, uh, we said Boko Haram or Shabab. Those are actually Ahzab, Hizb. Those are the Hizbiyun, the Takfiriyun amongst the Hizbiyun. And uh, Jama'at, they likewise, you could say they're Jama'at. So anyway, the point being is that we should hold on all to the rope of Allah and not divide into groups and sects and have enmity between the group of Muslims and the believers. So Sheikh Saad ibn Fuzan, half of Allah Ta'ala, he mentions about this command to be one, uh, one jama'ah, you know, to be with the main body of the Muslims and to avoid prohibitions. He mentions, he said that, that this asl, it's contained in the Qur'an, of course, because this is where these usul, usul al sitta they're coming from the Qur'an. They're coming from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why Imam Muhammad of the Wahhab is saying it's so clear. It's clear for anyone, even the, the awam, the general Muslims that are even those that are very ignorant. They could be Bedouin Arabs, they could be in the villages of Ethiopia, they could be in the high mountains of Nicaragua, wherever the case may be, or in some place in a remote village in India somewhere, that it's very clear as long as they understand, even in their language, some of what they're reading, that these usul do not require uh, extra contemplation because they're there. They're there in the book of Allah. And they're there in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. So he says that this asl, this is contained in the Quran. He says, Qala ta'ala, wa ta'asimu wa habli jameen wa la tafarruku. And this is the ayat that we mentioned that hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, wa la ta'kunu kalladheen tafarruku wa akhtalafu. Also in Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not be like those who, uh, who split and they differed. That's why I try to encourage my brothers and sisters that it is not a good thing to follow up the mistakes of one another in the du'at, especially the du'at to sunnah that are known for the sunnah, or people whose asl is from Ahl sunnah, because this is bringing uh, more discord, more uh, enmity between the brotherhood, which is supposed to be uh, adhering to the, uh, the rope of Allah which is the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the rope of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Deen of Islam. So we should be focusing on adhering to that and leave off the minor differences between Ahl Sunnah. We're not talking about the differences between us and Ahl Bidah. Of course, as long as they're still Muslim, they're still our Muslim brothers and they still have certain rights over us. But because of their Bidah and their deviation from the book of Allah, or from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then that is where we have uh, discord and, pro uh, and problems with them for making new understandings of the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala all throughout the Quran is commanding us to be one and to avoid splitting. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem in Surah Al-An'am, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينُهُمْ وَكَانُوا شِيْعًا لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ إِنَّمَا أَمَرُهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem Verily those who divide their religion that they have become or they were sects you know Shia they were groups and sects less than minhum fi shay and you have no nothing with them because because they have they've divided the religion they've split according to the Rai and their Bidah إِنَّمَا أَمَرُهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Their affair is with Allah. So we know that it's madhmoon. These ayat are showing us that it is sinful to split. We shouldn't be split. So we should not encourage splitting from the main body of Muslims. We should strive our best to unite the Muslims, but unite them upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can't compromise those principles. But we should do our best to give da'wah to our brothers and sisters that have fallen into mistakes and error and need 
uh, and need that uh, assistance in coming back to the Hublilah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Shara lakum min al Deen ma wasa bihi nuhim waladi ohayna ilayka wa ma wasayna bihi Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa. And uqimu al Deen wa la tatafarroku fihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al Shura, verse 13. He says, and we have legislated for you in the religion. What we have ordered for you, what we ordered a uh, Nuh, and those who we revealed, uh, we, we gave revelation to, and, and, and you, that we commanded you, uh, and, and uh, with what Ibrahim and, and Musa, and Isa were commanded with, and that is to establish the religion and not to divide. So all of these ayat show us this important asl, the second asl from those usul that we're studying, is to not to divide, to be one ummah. So then Imam Fuzan said, فَلَا يَجُوزْ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ أَنْ يَتَفَرَّقُوا فِي دِينِهِمْ بَلْ يَجِبُوا أَنْ يُكُونُوا أُمَّةٍ وَاحِدٍ عَلَى تَوْحِيدٍ قال تعالى إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فاعبدون. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة الأنبياء verse uh, 92. So uh, Imam Fuzan says first فلا يجوز للمسلمين. He said it's not permissible for the believers, for the Muslims, to divide their religion. Rather, it's an obligation for them to be one ummah on Tawheed on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So that so is it's muqayyid. It's restricted. It's not that just we unite. So this is why we have a, a, a difference with Akhwana Muslimin and we have a problem with Akhwana Muslimin. They say, hey, you're Muslim, let's unite under this broad umbrella for a political objecti ob objective and we'll excuse one another for our differences. Meaning, this one worships graves, this one is a hardcore takfiri. This one is Salafi. This one is this. Hey, let's just unite, call ourselves Muslims, go for this political objective, and forget about our differences. But that goes against what Allah is commanding, and then what is the methodology of those who preserve the deen, which is the Salaf Asadi. That's that, in a nutshell, why we don't embrace that ideology of Akhwana Muslimin. Because it sounds good for your desires. If you look at this from a perspective outside of Islam, but instead we are muqayyid, we're restricted by Islam. We have to unite upon Tawheed. We have to unite upon the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to unite upon the Minhaj of the Salaf. We can't go and just say, well, we got this political objective. Let's forget about all our mistakes. I know you worship graves, and I say that shirk. You say that I'm doing what I'm doing is, is kufr. We make takfir of one another. We this, we that. You know, because that, that's not real unity. Because it doesn't work. Aslan, it even doesn't work when you try to make tatbik of that. It doesn't work. Wallah mas'an. So, Imam Fuzan then mentions the ayat. He says that, you know, we, we're ordered to be one ummah and unite upon Tawheed. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadhi ummatukum ummatan wahida. That verily this nation of yours is one nation. Wa anna rabbukum fa'budun. And I am your Lord, so worship me. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to do. We know the purpose of creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's Tawheed. And how should we do that? We should be one Ummah. All throughout the Quran and the Sunnah, it encourages us to be one Ummah, but we have to look at those Taqeed. We have, we have to look at those uh, Taqeed uh, or, or those, those things which restrict us. Those, those criterion, there's a criterion for that unity. It's not just on anything. It's not just on batal. We can't unify on falsehood. Then Imam Fozan, he drives it home. He says, لا يجوز لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تتفرق في عقيدتها وفي عباداتها وفي أحكام دينها هذا يقول حرام وهذا يقول حرام بغير دليل لا يجوز هذا لا شك أن الاختلاف من طبيعة البشر كما قال تعالى سبحانه ولا يزالون مختلفين 
illa ma rahima rabbuka wa li dhalika khalaqahum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-hud this verse so Imam Fuzan he mentions he said it's not permissible for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to divide in their aqidah okay in their creed uh, or in their ibadah in their worship or in the uh, rulings of the religion this one says that it's halal. This one says that it's haram without evidence. So that's very important because there's going to be differences. But it's just that when someone says this is halal and this is haram without dalil, that's a dangerous thing. We have so many people, so many du'a ala abwaab jahannam. As the Prophet wasallam said, that there's many callers to the path of the hellfire who are calling to the doors of the gateways of hellfire. Why? Because they're they're making this one this this halal and this haram, when it's the opposite, okay? And they are doing all kind of bid'ah and mukhalafat, saying you can get to Jannah many different ways. You can get to Jannah, the Christians and Jews are going to Jannah with us. Uh, the, even the, uh, the pagans and, and the, the Sikhs and the Brailavis and these and these, they're all going to Jannah. Even though they worship different things and some worship many gods, some worship the graves. This is absolutely incorrect. And this is not a shared aqidah. This is not a unity in one aqidah. So of course then they're going to have it. And they have no evidence. No sahih evidence. Mustanid al kitab wa sunnat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the understanding of the salaf. They don't have that. To substantiate all the shirkiyat and all the bid'ah and the khurafat that many of the groups and sects do. He said, la you Jews have it. He says, this is not permissible. And no doubt that Differing is from the tabiyyat to the bashar. So we have to recognize that also it's from the na our natural state of affairs that we differ. We differ about people. Almost everything we differ. We differ physically. We differ mentally. We have different understandings of everything. We can watch the same event and we have differences. Oh, I, I noticed this. Oh, wow, I noticed that. We see things differently. Oh, he said this. And five different people will have five different understandings of what the individual said, even if it was very clear or it appears to be very clear. And you see the danger in that. So, this is from our fitrah. It's our nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Almighty, in the Quran, about this, about that being our nature, He says that, and the people will not cease to uh, differ, meaning they'll, they'll continue to differ, except those who your Lord has mercy upon, and in this regard He created them. So meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with this intellect and the ability to reason and that we will differ. We will differ. But we are ordered to be one ummah and to unite upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the salaf al salih Meaning, going back to how did the sahaba understand aqidah? How did they understand fiqh? Where they differed in fiqh? We, we have to look at you know, whose evidence is stronger? Was this from the Ijtihad of, uh, of Abu Bakr? Was this from the Ijtihad of Ibn Abbas? Was this from the Ijtihad of Abu Huraira? Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem regarding this, He says, فَإِن تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لُكُمْ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem, that so when you differ over something, so when, when you have this differing, for a duwil Allahi wa rasuli, that's that's the shahid. Return it back to the book in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment, so if you're a mu'min, if you're striving to to worship Allah and believe, be a believer, then return your differences back to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see who has the most sound evidence and then we make tislim fi qulubina fi hadha you know, then we, we have to be uh, after that, you know, comforted in our hearts and not go against that strong evidence and there are so many ayats uh, that mention and so many ahadith you know, we're ordered to be one ummah, we're ordered to ta'awana la bira wa taqwa, to, uh, to cooperate in righteousness and God-fearfulness. We're ordered to be, uh, uh, to advise one another. So many ahadith. Listen to this one, ahad one hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there's countless beautiful ones, but we're, we don't want to prolong because we haven't even got to Sheikh uh, Zaid, his, his, his explanation yet. 
uh, Imam Fuzani mentions this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is a hadith which is in Muslim, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, advised and ordered his ummah. He said, Inna Allah yarda lakum thalatha. Verily Allah uh, is pleased with you three things. And ta'buduhu wa la tushriku bi shayin. To worship him and him alone and do not associate partners with him. And تَتَّسِعُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold on to you all steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. That's the second thing. وَإِن تُنَاسِحُوا مَنْ وَلَا هُوَ اللَّهُ أَمْرَكُمْ And to advise the one who is ruling over you. So that shows us the delil that we have to advise the rulers. We should not spit, sit in gatherings and pick apart the rulers. And actually we're going to get into that. That's one of the asul from these asul asitta uh, that we're going to study shortly. Uh, but it's very important that our, our, we're ordered to, to advise one another. So I, likewise I want to mention that you should advise, if you have a problem for example with one of the du'ata khayr. I'm not talking about one of the du'ata bid'ah. So I have to keep stating this because people will take your statement out of context, they'll cut and paste a bit of your clip and then they'll put it out there and say that you're Khwani and you're this and you're this and this. So I want to make this very clear as so many of our imma have said and then even their statements are taken out of context and used against them. Wallah mustan. So of course this will happen to us as well. Wallah mustan. So that it's very important to even as the Prophet وسلم, said Tanasahu Men wallahu Allah amarakum to advise those who are command who have authority over you. So this is advising the leader. This is the asl. Likewise, you should advise your imam or your your uh, talib al ilm or scholar that you're taking knowledge from. Advise him if you find a mistake. At least you can you maybe he will clarify. So maybe the mistake is on your part. Maybe there's some weakness in what you heard about what he said. Maybe uh, there's just some doubtfulness in a better way he could say it. Or maybe there's doubtfulness on your part. You, 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 and likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, or, ordered us to make excuses for our brothers. There's so much evidence out there. But instead, we take only the harsh positions. We, we don't go to so much of the sunnah. So much of the sunnah. And this comes from a lack of fiqh fi deen. When you read the law, be khayr and you fiqh fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, gives them understanding of the religion. That fiqh fi deen means you're going to know and know the book of Allah. Know it. Know the different verses. And how to make tafbik and, and the, 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 the tafsir, and, you know, the explanations and the context and the asbab and nuzul, the reasons they were revealed and things like this. And you'll be able to incorporate that into the fiqh. Likewise, uh, having knowledge of fiqh, you know, jurisprudence and the different aqwal, not just one. You studied only Hanbali, uh, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i only. La, the one, the, the, the faqih. He has knowledge of the, what those fuqaha, those great imams of the religion, and why they differed in different messiah. And whose who's, uh, goal seems strongest in more accordance with the delil. That's, that's fiqh fi deen. Likewise, in how to practice the qawaid of the salaf, and all the other usul of the religion, and how to understand the ahadith, and the different explanations, and how to put that into practice. Then that will make you less eager to speak and attack the honor of the leaders and attack the honor of the du'a to khair. Those are very important issues that we have to uh, contemplate and we have to reflect upon. So Sheikh Zaid, rahmatullahi rahmatan wa he said about this, uh, the second asul, he said, this is the truth that has been spoken about in the book of Allah, the mighty and majestic, where he said, and hold firmly to the rope of Allah altogether and do not become divided and remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies and he brought your hearts together and you became by his favor brothers and you were on the edge of a pit of fire and he saved you from it uh, in Ali Imran. It's the same ayah that we mentioned. Uh, a faida from this also I recall in some of our early stages of embracing Islam, some of the brothers that I embraced Islam around that period of time, I remember some of the brothers relating their stories, especially some of the brothers from LA. They mentioned that they used to be in opposite gangs. This one was a crip, this one was a blood. And that they became Muslim brothers, which superseded all of that. 
and it's so applicable to this ayah. And remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies. They were enemies prior to that. And he brought your hearts together and you became by his favor brothers. SubhanAllah. And that's so, look at this, is the calam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to see, actually to see that happening. And they were on the bab of the fire before. For they were into drugs. They were, you know, multitude of women, uh, guns, running guns, doing all kind of crazy stuff on the verge of death, danger, and the hellfire. And then Allah brought them all to Islam, and they became brothers. So this is a great beauty of Islam, and we see that ayat being made, the, the tatbik of that ayat, and that we should hold on fast to the rope of Allah. So Allah the glorified and exalted commanded with holding firmly to his rope, and it is the solid religion which the book of the Lord of the worlds and the son of the leader of the early ones and the latecomers, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, have come with. And Allah and his message Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited from splitting and disagreement in the religion because it is the path of the polytheist and the path of the innovators. As for those who understand the religion, the mighty and majestic from the book of their Lord and the Sunnah of their Prophet ﷺ, they have united upon the religion in its entirety and they do not differ in conformity to the instruction of Allah to them in his precise revelation. Therefore, unity upon the evident truth is the path of the Salaf al -Sadi. Those who adhere to the correct understanding of the text of the magnificent book of Allah and the trustworthy Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, his family and all of his companions, and division is the path of the people of innovation who are misguided and misguide others. So they are the ones who come with division due to their deviation from the straight path without doubt, uh, the straight path which contains no doubt and or falsehood. Indeed, Allah commanded the entire ummah to traverse one path. It is the straight path. And Allah warned them against the crooked path in his truthful statement. Indeed, this is my straight path. So follow it and do not follow the other paths as they are separate they will separate you from my path. So Allah has commanded us to be one ummah, to follow one path. And that's the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sabeel of Mu'mineen, uh, the Minhaj of the Salaf al -Sali. So as far, so as for the people upon the book and the Sunnah with the correct understanding, then they have taken this divine instruction into their hearts and it is upon their tongues and they act upon it with their limbs. That's important. That's why we have to act upon that knowledge. If we're not, then we have the nux and maybe perhaps we don't even, we're not even really followers of the Salaf. That's the dangerous thing. As we mentioned, the proof in the reality of something is in its name, not in it, is, is, is in its substance, not in its name. So meaning, he calls himself Salafi. doesn't matter if he's not practicing the minhaj of the Salaf. He doesn't practice it. He doesn't have it in his manners. He doesn't have it in his aqidah. He doesn't have it in his, his minhaj. Okay? But he, he claims that. How many tekfiris do we know who claim to follow the Salaf? In fact, how many Sufis do we know even who mention Athar of the Salaf and claim uh, to follow the minhaj, the methodology of the Salaf, even if they follow a particular tariqah? So it's very important, Habitifillah, to actually practice, to practice this Islam. As for the people of innovation, that they have deviated from the straight path and gone to other paths which are situated to its right and its left. It is related from Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu that he said, we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so he drew a line like this in front of him. So he said, this is the path of Allah. And he drew two lines to its right and two lines to its left and said, these are the paths of the shaitan. Then he placed his hand upon the middle line. Then he recited this ayat. Indeed, this is my straight path, so follow it and do not follow the other paths as they will separate you from the hellfire. Uh, separate you from his path. So it's very important. The Prophet ﷺ illustrated for us that there would be du'at ala abwaab al jahannam. There would be a callers to the gates of the hellfire that call to other paths. The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, he said that, uh, you know, he drew a line. خَطَّ لَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ خَطَّنْ ثُمَّ خَطَّ عَلَى يَمِينِي وَخَطَّ عَلَى يَسَارِي فَقَالْ حَا before he said that, he said, Hadith Sabeel Allah. He said, this is the, the path of Allah, that first line he drew in the middle. Then the other ones, he said, those are the, the various paths, and at the end of each of those paths is a shaitan. Wa'iyadan billah. So then he said, so whoever takes this middle path will be saved with fortune. Uh, will be saved and fortunate. Whoever de deviates from the middle path and traverses upon the deviated paths, then he will fall into destruction in the worldly life, the barzakh, 
and the hereafter. Barzakh is the middle, the, the middle life. After we die, we're in, a, in Barzakh, the life of the grave. And we only know of it on how it's described from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hereafter. And then after that, after we're judged and we're in uh, Jahannam or, 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 or Jannah. May Allah bless us from uh, bless us to be in Jannah. I mean, Jannah to Fardos, I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And he for whom Allah has not granted light, then there is no light for him. So the light is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that guidance from Min Yahdi Allah from Muhtad. Whoever Allah guides, then he's guided. The danger of division and differing in the religion. So then Shaykh uh, Muhammad al Wahhab stated, So Allah prohibited us from being like those who split up and differed before us, such that they were destroyed. And he mentioned that he commanded the Muslims to unite upon the religion, and he prohibited them from splitting therein. And this is increased in clarity by that which has been mentioned in the Sunnah from amazing affairs concerning that. Then the affair became such that splitting with regards to the foundation of the religion and its subsidiary affairs was considered knowledge and fiqh of the religion. And the affair became such that no one spoke about unity in the religion except that he was considered a heretic or a madman. SubhanAllah. This is the sta status of, uh, of bid'ah. That bid'ah that as Imam Babahari mentioned and some of the Salaf that you know it starts out small but then it grows you know it becomes bigger so perhaps in one time somebody could do something minor which is a minor bid'ah. But then it grows, the people after him grow that until it becomes something alim, something even great and, and horrendous. And, it, and, and the people begin to see bid'ah as the sunnah and the sunnah as bid'ah. They begin to see the halal as haram and the haram as halal. And this is the, the state of affairs and what happened to the ummah, to many in the ummah. And they split and they divided and they began to see dividing as something, as something good and spiritual and spiritually gratifying and you and, and and uniting as something horrendous and terrible because they let jahiliyyah define it if i say that i'm only going to sit with pakistanis i'm only going to sit with african americans i'm only going to sit with this our religion you know our religion is our religious culture we're from kerala and we we think like this and, and we have to worship like this because our grandfathers didn't know but instead you have to believe all of that as far as your religion and you need to come back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and let that judge between us. It's not our race, it's not our nationality, it's not this, it's not that, but rather it's our creed, it's the Habli Allah, it's your, your adherence to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Shaykh said, commented, uh, Shaykh Zaid said, Indeed, the author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, has clarified here that Allah the Almighty and Majestic has prohibited division and disagreement. And at the first level, he has prohibited division with regards to Aqidah. And he has prohibited division with regards to the menhaj of Jihad and Da'wah. And he has prohibited division with regards to the obligation of commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And he has clarified that division within the religion is from the attributes of the people of Bid'ah and Mukaffara. It's from the people who have the innovation which takes them out of the fold of Islam. Uh, or the people of Bid'ah Mufassaka the innovation that amounts to disobedient sin. Since every innovation in the religion is evil, indeed the Prophet ﷺ called it misguidance. And Allah the Almighty and Majestic rebuked division and its people with a profound, uh, in a profound way when he said, Indeed, those who have divided the religion have become sects. You have nothing to do with them at all. So sectarianism, it, it takes you away from goodness and khayr. And he said, meaning Allah, and do not be like those who became divided and differed after the clear proofs had come to them. So Allah the Blessed and Exalted warned us so that we may not fall into what those who became before us, who came before us, fell into from division, differing, mutual aversion and splitting as a mercy upon us, kindness towards our condition, as a clear excusal and radiant argument. Allah did, did this so that no one could come on the Day of Judgment and say, No one came to us as a bringer of glad tidings, nor as a cautioner. And we did not hear anyone conveying the command of Allah, the exalted, the great, and the command of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the bringer of glad tidings, and the cautioner. In truth, Allah, the blessed and exalted, absolved them by sending messengers. And those whom Allah, the blessed and exalted, is appointed to teach whatever the messengers of Allah have come with. Alayhim salatu wasalam. 
Allah says, And we sent messengers and bringers of glad tidings and cautioners, so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers. So they came with the clear evidence. They came with the guidance. And it's up upon us to follow and not split and divide the religion. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.